What's up, Roto Grinders, and welcome to our new Plate IQ tool on RotoGrinders.com. It's a fantastic way for you to be analyzing matchups quickly on a daily basis. What we're looking to do is give you a time saving way to understand the particular matchups between a pitcher and a hitter on a nightly basis. So let's get started. Let's check out this game between Pittsburgh and Baltimore tonight. Let's take a look at the starting pitcher, Chad Cool, against the Baltimore hitters. That's the example we're going to use today. I have selected this game from the drop down. I have selected last two seasons of data. Gives me a little bit more in the way of plate appearances in which to evaluate. Now, as far as the statistics that are available to us today, we don't have everything that we're going to eventually have. So we've just got some basic stuff to look at. Just the K percent, the walk percent, the ground ball, fly ball, line drive. Don't worry, we'll build some other stuff in there later. This is version 1.0 of the release. Only going to get better. When you talk about what's available on the hitter side, when we were talking about is this guy in the lineup? Right now, it's early in the day, so we don't have the check mark. Eventually, we'll get this check mark over here. We'll find out who's in the lineup. We can toggle from hitter to hitter to see individually what they got going on versus the pitcher eventually. And, of course, we've got the basic sabermetrics, ISO, WOBA, looking at the BABIP, and then we're looking at the batted ball profile. You know, down the road, hopefully, we'll have some hard hit data. We'll have some other data to help make this matchup even more robust. For now, what we're doing is getting a quick view. So what are we seeing? Let's look at, let's use first look in combination with plate IQ. I think that's a good idea. Why? Well, because Noda does a great job of putting all kinds of other stats together and uh, some of the Vegas stuff too, right? So we can check out uh, Wade Miley is a favorite, for example, minus 138 in a nine run total game. It's in Camden Yards. We're just giving ourselves some context here. And we can also go down to Chad Cool. We can see some things that we'll eventually want to have over here in Plate IQ. Like, you know, his salary for starters. But also his Sierra. 4.82 compared to his ERA, which is, well, somehow it's better than his ERA. His ERA is terrible. Hasn't been that good. His swing and strike percentage is good at 11.6, but his K rate is not good. That tells me there's some room for this number to go up if he's getting swings and misses at this rate, if this is real. That's a good question. Is this real? Well, maybe not going to be able to answer that quickly, but to me, if this number sustains, this number is going to go up. We see his walk rate, which is going to be over here in plate IQ too. Uh, last two seasons, it's been a little bit better than, I think, just this season. Let's see. Sure enough, yep, walk rate goes up. So, that's what we're doing here. I I'm checking out uh, MLB First Look by Notorious, published every single day. What else we got here? Well... Hard contact, 33.1%. Home run to fly ball ratio, maybe due for a little bit of regression upwards, 7.9%. Usually around 10%, where you're going to see most players hovering within a couple percentage points of. Anyone who's got a higher percent than that is either really bad or, well, they're probably going to have that number go down. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Let's take a look at the matchup. What do we got? Well, we have a pitcher who gets more ground balls against right-handed batters than left-handed batters. We have a pitcher who is striking out more right-handed batters than left-handed batters. We have, if we go back over to first look, a pitcher who is considerably worse against left-handed batters than right-handed batters. This story kind of checks out from, you know, obviously ground balls are good and not having many of them is not good. So 
it's leading to more weighted on base. Guys probably generating more power uh, against him from the left side of the plate. That would mean, obviously, we would like to see a lot of left-handed batters against them. Unfortunately, Baltimore is rolling out two in the projected lineup we have right now. They are a right-handed heavy team. Seth Smith and Chris Davis. Now, the rest of these righties are good against right-handed pitching, so it's, you know, we've got a 329 Woba for Jones, 346 for Machado, 345 for Trumbo, Power, 228 for Trumbo, 224 ISO for Machado. Dangerous team. 200 total ISO. That's what we're seeing here down at the bottom. So we've got the ISO down at the bottom. 200 as a team. They've got power. They've got some on-base ability. They strike out, though. We saw Chad Cool's strikeout rate. He's the team that can strike out. Chad Cool, not exactly the picture of a strikeout pitcher that we're fearing. Probably not going to be our primary starter today, but again, we're talking about just looking at the matchup in the vacuum here. We're not yet evaluating it against everyone else who's playing today. We're just looking at what's happening in a vacuum. So, they hit some ground balls. You know, it's good for cool. Especially those righties. Infield fly balls. All right. So what do we know quickly after looking at Baltimore? We know that they have two left-handed bats projected against a guy who you'd rather take lefties against. But we also know that the right-handers in this lineup hit lefties pretty well. So we're not like assuming that the fact that there's no lefty bats is good for Chad Cool. We see that they have power. We see that they can get on base. We see that they can strike out. And we see that they can hit ground balls. So there is like some things in favor of Cool here. Some things in favor of the Orioles. Vegas is favoring the Orioles in this matchup. With their implied run total. I think they're giving them, what, as far as when it's published, five runs. So, geez, uh, you'd like to think that you want to take some of these bats. But who, who do you want to take? Well, let's start with the lefties. Let's start with Chris Davis. Like, uh, we see the basic overview. And, and the basic overview, it's going to say, well, we should probably take him. He's got a big ISO against a guy who struggles against lefty bats. And maybe that's where we should stop, right? It's not always good to go deeper than this. I mean, we saw Scooter Jeanette hit four home runs last night. Like, it's, it's not like doing deep analysis is the key to winning at Daily Fantasy Baseball. But if you want to, you can dig deeper and find a reason to maybe question the viability of a play. You don't do it all the time. We don't have all day to be doing this. Most of us don't anyway. But maybe if you want to spend some time digging on individual hitters, let me show you what you can do with Played IQ. First of all, when we talk about areas of the zone, what we're looking for is we're looking for overlap between the frequency that a guy throws a pitch and a frequency in which a guy hits a pitch. Now, plate IQ is only showing us hit percentage. What does that mean? We're just seeing the percentage of his individual hits against that handedness of pitcher are coming in X area of the zone. I think we need more help if we want more context. Good news, context is easy to find in this day and age. I'll show you how. So we see Chad Cool throws low in the zone. He also throws pretty frequently outside the zone. Like, like he's basically, he's not giving one area of the plate where a guy can just, just like sit on and wait for a particular pitch. It's usually low because of his pitch types. He throws a lot of sliders. He throws a lot of sinkers, 48% sinkers, 25% sliders. We can see on the spider chart over here, this is the league average, both the slider and the sinker, well above the league average in those areas. So this is a guy whose pitch mix doesn't look a lot like a lot of other pitchers' pitch mixes. Uh, he's relying on these two pitches quite a bit. They're his two best pitches. So that's why we're probably going to see a lot of stuff coming outside the zone and down low in the zone. Uh, over here with Davis, well, 14% of his hits come down on the inner half uh, of the plate as, as a lefty here against a right-handed bats or right-handed pitcher. So uh, that's what we want to look for. We would, well, we would want to look for 
like real big hot zones here. We don't see like a massive hot zone here, so we can't say with confidence that the like, cool uh, stylistically is just going to favor Davis as a matchup right now. It doesn't mean sh- anything though, so don't worry that this isn't the case. We can still we're not, we can't cross Davis off the list just because of this. We're just looking for maybe a reason to move him higher up the list or give him an extra uptick here. Again, we're not. You know, we don't want to paralyze ourselves with analysis here. We're just trying to find anything that gives us a clue that Davis is in a really good spot as compared to just a good spot. We know he's in a good spot. He's a power lefty against a guy who struggles against lefties. So now we see that Davis uh, doesn't really have like super high edge. But let's, you know what? Let's prove it. Prove it to me, Chris. We got data from every pitch back to 2015 on BaseballSavant.com. It is MLB Advanced Media's fantastic site that looks at StatCast. If you're not looking at StatCast, I would contend that you need to start looking at it sooner than later. It is the future. So let's take a look at Chris Davis versus right-handed pitching. Uh, Sure enough, it matches up down low and in the inner half of the plate this year is where he is smashing the baseball. Uh, Also, I mean, right down the center, obviously. People are going to smash the ball pretty good most of the time. But this is just this year. The sample size is pretty small. Uh, this, we were looking at the last two years over here. That's that's a little bit bigger of a sample. But So let's take a look at last year, see if Chris Davis has a trend down this half of the plate. It would make sense, right? I mean, we're talking about a left-handed batter like Davis. And sure enough, uh, the lower portion of the plate seems to be uh, a pretty good spot for him now. Now, he was uh, strong out here. I don't know what the sample size is out in this half of the plate, but it doesn't look exactly like our chart here, pretty close. We're looking at the exit velocities here, by the way. That's what the numbers are. This is his average exit velocity. So we're seeing frequency of hits here. And now I'm on baseball some and I'm looking at how hard those hits were. Let's go back to 2015. That's the last year in which StatCast, uh, you know, that's when it started. So you can't get exit velocity before that. Once again, down the center part of the plate, uh, you know, we're, we're, the story checks out basically is all I'm telling you. There's a reason that Chris Davis is getting more of his hits down here. He's being, he's able to hit the ball harder when that's where the ball goes. So, but that only tells us like where the ball goes. I mean, like this, we, we haven't really learned too much, right? We've just learned that, you know, it seems to be where pitches end up becoming hits for Chris Davis the most is when you leave it here. We don't see that cool is like overly aggressive and placing the ball there so I think we just need to take a little bit deeper look at the pitches and the pitch types because ultimately I think that's where we can find out a little bit more about Chris Davis versus Chad Cool's style he likes to throw the sinker well according to plate IQ the sinker is 0.8 that's well below the league average as far as the percentage of his hits versus sinker Uh, percentage of hits versus slider also below the league average so it seems that Davis for whatever reason, hasn't gotten a lot of hits off of these two pitches in this data set, which goes back the last two seasons. So prove it. That's my motto here. Let's prove it. So on Baseball Savant, we are now in the StatCast search section of Baseball Savant. Let's go ahead and take a look at sliders. We could take a number of pitches, but we're going to look at, let's look at sinkers first. That's the pitch he throws the most, right? We want sinkers. We want the, for the regular season. We're looking at the last three years when we have StatCast. Oh, and we're, we're looking at batters and we're looking at Chris Davis. Search. We've got 338 appearances, 6,000 pitches to look at. I would say that we should know something about Chris Davis versus the sinker in that sample. Look at his radial chart. Barrels, three barrels in three years. That's not impressive. Solid contact, eight instances. Flares and burners, 12. 22 topped. It's working. They're getting the ground balls they want with Chris Davis against the sinker. Or he's got a lot of pop-ups too. 18 pop-ups. Four instances of weak contact. Color me unimpressed so far. Let's take a look at his pitch breakdown. 12% swinging strikes. Yikes. 
against the sinker, a ball you're supposed to hit. They you a sinker they want you to hit a ground ball and get out. <clears throat> it's not like a swing and miss pitch by and large. Looks like a fastball. It drops down and all of a sudden you hit a ground ball and you're out. He's missing it. <clears throat> That's not fantastic. 7.1% hits. I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. Let's find out. What year? 2015? SI pitch type, the sinker. 9 for 33. 273 average. One home run. <clears throat> We're playing Daily Fantasy Baseball. We want home runs. He had one in 33 at-bats. Okay. Not impressive. Down here. Sinker. Zero home runs in 2016. 36 at-bats. Four extra base hits. Not impressed. 2017. Sinkers. He's 5 for 10 this year. He's a stud. Two home runs. He's elite. In 10 at-bats. What do we know? <clears throat> In like 80 at-bats. Wait, what's the number? So he's 10 this year. He's got 36 last year. These are, by the way, plate appearances that ended in a sinker ball as the hit. So, 33 the year before. So, in like, you know, 75, 80 at-bats. I mean, this dude is just like not smashing the sinker. And he's going to face a guy that throws 50% of them. So, does that mean Chris Davis is not going to hit well? Maybe it does. Let's check out the slider. Maybe maybe Chris Davis crushes the slider and this is all for nothing because, you know, the other half of the pitches has to be something else. And if it's a slider and he hits that, then who gives a shit what he does against the sinker? Let's find out. Let's recap why I'm looking at another website versus Play IQ because Play IQ. It's giving us a clue. It's telling us to look here. I'm using Baseball Savant to get deeper if I want to. It's got every pitch back to 2015. We don't have that yet on Plate IQ. Why not use this free tool? These are both free tools. Let's use them both. Radio chart for the slider. We got more barrels here. That's promising. Probably saw more pitches, though. So we'll have to wait and see before we get excited. Solid contact a little bit better, too. Flares and burners. At least it's in the air, is the way I'll put that. Not awesome. Topped. No thanks. Hit under. Pass. Weak contact. Hell no. All right. Still not impressed. Maybe the pitch breakdown. 21% whiffs. Maybe you're impressed by that. I'm certainly not. 4.6% hits. That doesn't sound good. What the hell's going on with this guy? 2015 against the slider. Five home runs in 91 appearances. 242 average. Four extra base hits. 10% of the time it's an extra base hit, I guess is the only way you could word that. That's all right. That was 2015. That was two years ago. What about last year? Sinker. 36 at-bats. Zero home runs. 
four extra base hits. How about the slider? That's what we're looking at. Seven home runs. That's better. In 82 appearances. 146 batting average, though. <laughs> yeah. So he's got two doubles, seven home runs, three singles. <laughs> 146 average. Good oh boy. Did I look at the wrong pitch on 2015? I might have done that. Let's make sure. It's early, guys. It's like 8 a.m. Eastern. Give me a pass here if I looked at the wrong thing. Yeah, okay. Five home runs in 91 appearances. Yeah, okay. We looked at the right thing. Just checking. Just checking. 242 average. Still not good. So we got a 242 average in 15. A 146 average in 2016. Seven home runs, three singles. This guy is absolutely as boom and bust as it comes. This year, the slider. He's got three home runs against the slider this year. Still batting 194, three singles. I mean, look, here's the deal with Chris Davis. He's susceptible to, like, the 0 for 4 performance here. I mean, grant you, this is his better split. He likes batting against right-handed pitching. He does get fly balls against right-handed pitching. 42% fly balls. But we saw that the pitch types that Cool is throwing have not been good from a power standpoint as far as he is concerned. So if you want to play DFS and you are looking for a home run from Chris Davis, I would say that these numbers here are showing us that he is going to be a great play against a guy who struggles against left-handed bats. And I will contend that digging deeper into his pitch type data and his zone profiles, that he is maybe not as good as everyone is going to tout him today. That does not mean that he is not playable. All it means is that if I was making a list of the guys I thought were going to hit a home run today, I probably wouldn't put him at the tippy top. We do see that when he does make contact, really ever, especially against righties, and even against the pitch types that we saw he struggles against, he can hit a home run. But using some tools like Plate IQ, Baseball Savant, Notorious's first look, I think we've seen here that, you know, you can bump him down a little bit. We're not taking him down all the way. We're just nudging him down a little bit. That's all I'm saying. This is the kind of thing you can do with plate IQ. You don't have to go that deep. You can keep it simple. We're going to keep building this thing out to help make it simple for you to understand the matchup for your pitcher. His strikeout rate against here. <clears throat> matchup for your batters. For RotoGrinders.com, my name is Chris Jamino. Hopefully this was helpful. Best of luck in all of your contests tonight.